again and i hope that you're ready for table talk to begin because we're ready and we're eager to get into table talk so let's especially if we're going to talk about vacation oh my goodness vacations (laughs) got to be excited about that sometimes but we want you to invite the unseen guests have that place for them invite everybody in your family because you will want to start your conversation about this even before we finish But that's okay. Let's be sure that we invite the Lord Jesus into our discussion. Loving Father, we know that we need you, whether we're standing still or we're moving around. And yet at this time, dear Lord, we ask you to be with us in our talk and in our conversation. And Lord, we know that you speak with a still, small voice. May we hear it, and may we follow it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, just to review a little bit, you know, we talked about summertime. Mm -hmm. And summertime is a lot of different things for different people. True. Uh, For some families, they're at home during the summer. 
Uh, and if there's vacation, usually it's deceased family down the road a piece or whatever. It's not, not a major thing. But for other families, it's the only time that the whole family can get off because the children are not in school. Right. So we talked about what happens mm-hmm. when school is out. How do we plan our summer for our children so that they're prepared to go back into the system of learning that they left mm-hmm. to start summer at a good place? Yes. Because there's a lot of losses that take place yes. during the summer when children are not reading, they're not exposed to any of the learning capabilities, and they do tend to sort of slide back into some habits. Well, some of it is because there's not structure. Whatever happens, happens, and there's not an established time for certain things. Okay. And that makes getting back into the school system difficult. Well, let's talk about a couple of things, because one of the things that we mentioned before is the capability of reading. And sometimes it's by book, sometimes it's by iPad, but it's specific reading that enhances us and helps us to move ahead, to progress in our knowledge and application of things. So, you know, those are difficult to do when you're outside the classroom because the pandemic showed us that. Yes, and because of the environment in which we are now existing, they're banning books and saying that we're not going to put these books in libraries. And I think that in some ways that's an overstep because a parent can make a decision about what's appropriate for their child to be exposed to. And it's an opportunity for discussion. Well, God gives us some of those advices in the Old Testament and in the New Testament about how we expose ourselves in whatsoever we do, do it all unto the glory of God, number one. And number two, we be to be tempered in all things. And there's certain things that you need to screen out. Yes. And that's what parents are for. Yes. Parents' purpose in life is to give the children the benefit of their life experience right. and also help them to create their own. But if a child never sees a parent read a book. That's right. That's one of the things. So parents are also models. Yeah. And we talked about that. So those are the types of things that you're going to do if you're home. Now, what if you're driving or even doing air travel and going to places and things? You know, there are great benefits in seeing different things and going different places yes. that enhances your yes. educational experience. It does. It broadens you. I remember when I was younger and riding in the car with my parents, we used to play this game, I spy, and you would have to find various things along the highway. And that made you more attentive to where you were riding to. And certainly in this day of air travel, if you've talked to your children about where they're going and what they might expect to find, if you're going somewhere that's outside of the United States, then children need to be prepared because things they expect to have or get may not be available. Yeah, well, it tickles me. I tickle myself sometimes because when I'm in an airplane and looking out the window, and because I have a penchant for map reading, I try to look at what I see in the topography we're passing over, the ground, the mountains, the hills, the highways, the towns, and try. I try to figure out where we are. And it is, I especially like when they give us a screen or you get on your phone or your, or your iPad and you can look at the route yeah. and where you're passing over and identify geographic locations. But it's the same thing when you're riding in a car. Yeah. But it's from this way, it's a different perspective. And let's think about it, that if you are, I remember a trip, <clears throat> we were moving from New York to California, and instead of hearing, are we there yet, we got all of our kids their own map, and they mapped out the day's journey. And so 
if you've done that with children, you can talk about what's different, what what you can expect. I remember when we had the opportunity to spend four and a half weeks in East Africa, we learned a lot of differences simply because we were somewhere else. Yes, and that happens to children. When you travel with children, they are exposed to things they don't see every day, and they get to compare them with where they are. But it also builds in them an expectation that maybe one day I can come back to this area and live. Or I can come back and visit and see what it's like on my own as an adult. Because we as parents have intentionally provided them with opportunities to see where we're going, what we can do, and how things might be exciting. And we can also help them appreciate what they have at home because so many children think everybody has or gets what they have, and you go to other parts of the world, and that is not the case. Well, other parts of the city. (laughs) Okay. I was going to be nice. Well, I think we are being nice when we bring it back down to what is more reachable by most everybody. Okay. Because we found out that when we moved into the Houston community, that when we tried to go from one part of the city to the next, it was difficult asking people for directions because some of them had never moved out of their area to see other areas in the city. That is very true. And, you know, we found that it was exciting when we were in New York and uh, working there that we got to see some things. And because we were interested in the town where we lived. And it was exciting because there were so many things that we didn't think about. You can live there every day, and yet 90% you don't expose yourself to. Well, I'm remembering that people laughed at us because we went to the Empire State Building, the World Trade Center, all of those places. And they were like, well, why are you going? We've never been. Well, and I thought, but you lived here all your lives. You could have ridden the subway. It makes you smile, doesn't it? It does. But now, in retrospect, there is no World Trade Center. That's right. You get to experience something, and you have it in your mind, even though it's not visible anymore. And it also helps you to see people as they live in different ways in different matters, because uh, I like the fact that where we live is massively uh, filled with different people from different parts of the world. So you can actually go to various places to eat or go into certain sections of the city or to see people and talk to people along the way. I have a guy at the rental agency I talk to who is from a place that I've never been. And Because I talk to him and get him to share with me about his home, sometimes he talks about going to see his father and what he was able to do and he's concerned about him. I get to know a little bit about others. Yes. And that's exciting. But instead of focusing only upon ourselves, I think it it broadens and deepens our empathy. Well, I think the word for it is worldview. Mm -hmm. We begin to see others and realize everybody has a story. That's right. And if if we don't know that, then we have no sense of empathy for anybody. Because empathy grows out of what is similar Mm -hmm. in your experience. Not the same, but similar that somebody else has. And it creates a better person. And it creates a person that God can use to affect the lives and the quality of living and also to invite them to know God like you know God. So there are all these things we can do with vacations. Yes, and we can do them even if it's a staycation and you're at home. That's right. But let's also remember, you talked about structure. Even on vacations, there's got to be some structure. One reason safety Mm -hmm. is important. Just don't go buck wild. No. On vacation, everybody does whatever they want to do in every direction. There's got to be 
uh, full knowledge of where we are, what we're doing, that we can remain safe. And part of the structure is particularly, even if you are within the United States, if you go east, there's a time change. If you go west, there's a time change. How do you prepare your body to handle that time change? I mean, that's important, isn't it? Because how our bodies are is how our minds will also be. Because our body energizes the mind. And without that kind of rest, We still need the rest. Back to the rest again. God says there will remain a rest. Yes. Not only resting in me, but resting knowing that you're secure and that you know where you are and that you're capable of doing what you choose to do from day to day that also glorifies God in your body. And I have realized, particularly for us, since we no longer have children, that sometimes vacation means that first day we do absolutely nothing. Well, that's something we had to adapt, right? (laughs) Because we found out that you come back from vacation worn out. You need a vacation from the vacation. vacation from the vacation unless you plan it well and make sure you build in rest periods along the way and you're not completely done in and having to take a month to get back into your system again. So you have to give that thought, and you have to give it planning. So what do you think uh, is going to be our challenge as a couple, for instance? We, as we get older, and we got to talk to the parents, right? And to those who are families that are not necessarily, like you say, with young children, when we travel and when we do things, we have to also plan with that same thought in mind. And, you know, it's interesting. You go somewhere you've never been before and you want to cram in everything because there's so much you want to see and so much you want to do. But you've got to, you, I think you quoted before, be temperate in, in all, all things. things. That's right. And that helps us to use a standard that God has given. Yes. And it brings balance into the life. And that balance helps us to not overuse or overstimulate any one part of our living so that it breaks down our capabilities of being sustained. We don't often think about being sustained in life. That is true. That's very important because you've got more life to live than just today. And uh, when we follow God's principles, that's what's happening. Whether you eat, drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. That's a New Testament text that tells us that God wants us sustained. And as a Christian, and our children can learn from this, as we share with them as we're older, We can't go like we used to go when you were younger. It's called pacing yourself. Pacing yourself. And then you have to decide what's really important. That's right. What do you really intend to find out at this new place you've vacationed? That's right. And you also, I think, need to do something about legacy. We often do not spend enough time around relatives. That is true. And I'm finding out that I'm just learning some of my relatives even today in this period of time that I've not known all along because we've been so busy doing other things and we haven't taken the time to research and we didn't listen to parents and grandparents earlier carefully and record or write down things so we're having to come late to the party and learn some things. Legacy is important. Use some vacation time to build legacy for your children, for your family, for yourself. And, you know, I can remember talking about legacy when I was a little girl and I lived in Minneapolis with my parents. And my grandparents lived outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee, in a place called Ottawa, that the trip was taken to discuss the things I had at home that did not necessarily exist at my grandparents' house, like running water, 
Mm-hmm. For instance. And in inside bathrooms. Yes. And <laughs> I was told that I didn't need to have this discussion. This was just what it was. And it did make a difference. In fact, that's where I learned how to go out to the hen house and gather eggs. Yes. Well, I can appreciate that. That's also how I learned in Muskegon, Michigan, how to go to the bathroom. Uh, and it's cold outside. <laughs> And the bathroom was outside. Yes. But these are experiences you learn. Yes. And appreciate the values that those who lived before us had to go through and learn how to be sustained in their yes. lives. And that's a part of your family history. That is legacy. That's legacy. So What mean these stones, I right. think, is what it says in the Bible. That's right. What God has done, where he has led our family— why we're here today as we are is because of what those who have come before us. And those are good things to build on during vacation time, yes. whether it's across town or away from town, just over in Louisiana somewhere or somewhere close by, or if it's across country or across the waters. Yes. These are all legacy opportunities, and we want to encourage that. Because the best legacy we can ever encourage is make sure that your God, your Redeemer, is in your discussion. And let everybody know that if it had not been for the Lord. Where would I be? Where would I be? Yes. That's the most important legacy. That is an important legacy. And that legacy gives us something to look forward to in the future. Yes, and the future is what we're going to talk about now, which is the next Table Talk. So we're hoping that you're ready to tune in the next time we do Table Talk so you can have everyone at the table. Uh, But we need to say goodbye right now, and we close out with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for giving us opportunities to project all of these things in our lives with our families that bring glory to your name, the caring about our relatives, the caring about our people and places where others are. And the empathy we show for them gives them an opportunity as well as us to know of God's great plan for redemption. We ask you to stay with us even as we plan for vacations. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity as we meet and talk to family, that we can have hope, but we can also claim your promise of a future when there will be a reunion day such as never has been before because we'll be with you throughout eternity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I can see you're already talking. Your table talk is going to be longer than ours. So we'll see you next time as you finish talking at your table. Have fun. Take care. God bless. to
day we'll keep joining hands together what a difference in this world that we can make Hey!